In today's video, we're going over how to use nerve mobility exercises for your patients with lumbar radicular pain or peripheral nerve sensitivity. So in your patients that have lumbar radicular pain from a potential disc herniation, disc bulge, whatever it is, oftentimes they present with neural tension. So when you do a slump test or a straight leg raise, oftentimes it feels terrible. It reproduces symptoms down the leg. So what happens after a major injury like this is the nerves going down the back side of the leg end up getting very irritated, very sensitive, very tender. They feel terrible, right? Nerve glides or nerve stretches have been shown to be effective treatment in order to reduce sensitivity and improve range of motion in your patients that have radicular low back pain. Al Shami et al. in 2021 compared three groups of patients that had peripheral nerve sensitivity. So one group just got TENS or electric stim. The second group got a nerve tensioner, right? So a nerve stretch. And the third got a nerve slider or a nerve glide. And what they found is that in the nerve intervention, so the tensioner or the slider, they both had improvements in pain as well as range of motion. And it actually didn't matter if they were in the tension group or the slide group. So A, using nerve glides, nerve stretches are effective treatment in these patients over doing TENS. And the other piece is it didn't really matter if you stretch the nerve or you try to glide the nerve, both of those things worked. So what are these neurodynamic exercises? So a nerve tensioner is essentially, if you think about your nerves, they start your brain, go down your spinal cord, come out during the spine, through the spine, and then come down through the lower extremity. And we can stretch those nerves anywhere along the whole pathway as they travel down to your toes. So think about your classic slump test. So go ahead, arms behind your back, Abby, chin to the chest, we're stretching the nerves at the neck, at the thoracic and lumbar spine. The hip is flexed, so we're stretching them there. And if we extend from the knee, and if we dorsiflex at the ankle, we are maximally stretching all the nerves as they travel from the brain down to the toes. Take a breather, right? That would be an example of a tensioner. In a slider, what we're doing is we're slacking the nerves at one joint while we tension them at another, right? So we can do this with a slump glide or a slump slider. So let's go ahead and chin to the chest, slouch for me down here, right? So we're basically through this region from neck down to the hip, we're, we're tensioning the nerve, we're stretching the nerve. And we're slacking the nerve here at the knee as well as at the ankle. Now let's reverse this, so good posture, looking up towards the ceiling here, and we'll straighten out and we'll dorsiflex. So what we're doing is we're slacking the nerve now up top, but we're stretching it down below. And what we're doing is we're taking that nerve and we're gliding it, flossing it, back and forth along its track without stretching it at any given point. The first and most important exercise we're gonna go over is actually hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Great for radicular low back pain. And it's also helping me out tremendously. Generally speaking, sliders are gonna be better tolerated than tensioners. One of the first places I like to start is with your patient just lying on their back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the leg right here, make sure I'm not hurting you as I do this. And I'm gonna bend at the hip and the knee at the ankle. So I'm driving the knee towards the chest. And what I'm doing is that I'm going to be tensioning the hip, slacking at the knee, and I'm going to be tensioning at the ankle. And I'm gonna switch this, I'm gonna point everything away. So now we have some tension behind the leg. We have no tension at the ankle or somewhere in between at the hip. And all I do is go back and forth to the patient's tolerance. Now if they're tolerating this, I'm gonna add a little more. I start pointing the toe up more towards the ceiling, back and forth just like so, yep. You can also have the patient do this on their own. So we take a ball, bring this underneath of their heel, just like so, and from here, I want you to drive the heel out, point the toe, then come back, pull the toe back in, right? Nice and easy. Once the patient is tolerating these really well, we can actually have them do this on their own just by holding your own knee. Go ahead and grab onto your knee here, Abby. Good, pull your knee to your chest, bring your toe with you, and now point up to the ceiling, back and forth, right? And if your patient's having a hard time grabbing their own knee, they can use a towel or a belt going around the knee here, and it makes it a little bit easier for them to hold onto the leg. Once your patient is tolerating these sliders, we can move on to some tensioners or some neural stretches. So the first one I like to do is to bring the leg up here, and then from this position, I want you to try to extend your knee and keep your toe pointed throughout, right? Come on back down and right back up again. So we're just stretching these nerves back and forth, if I want to make this a little bit more intense, I can do one of two things. I can dorsiflex the ankle, go ahead and extend. The other piece I can do is I can bring the knee towards the chest, just like that. What's nice about this is that Abby, go ahead and grab onto your knee. 
and keep on performing this movement. You can also use this as an exercise for patients at home. You don't have to do it yourself as a clinician, right? The next one I like to do, it is a straight leg raise test, so be careful with your patients. Or you can do a straight leg raise, come up to the point where you start to feel a little bit of your symptoms. How about this? You have some numbness and tingling right here? Excellent. And then from here, what we're gonna do is doors flex and then plantar flex and go back and forth. Once your patient is doing really well with this, we can start to work away into a little bit more hip flexion. Point, dorsiflex. Point, dorsiflex. Let's have you try to do this on your own. Nice. Point, dorsiflex. Point, dorsiflex. So again, we can use this as a home exercise program. We can also perform slump sliders and slump tensioners. We'll start with the sliders because usually they're tolerated a bit better. So what we'll do is we'll wind up the nerve from the lower half and the hip. So let's go ahead and bring your chin to your chest and slump forward for me. Thank you, Abby. And then from here, we reverse this motion. Go ahead and straighten up for me, eyes ahead, while extending and dorsiflexing at the knee and the ankle. So go ahead and slouch, leg down, and now flip, come right back up again. Good. Now this is a little challenging for patients to perform on their own. It's a little bit like, you know, rubbing your belly while tapping your head. So if you do it both arms and legs at the same time, it's generally a little bit easier. So I like to call this a swing glide because it's very similar to when you were young and you were swinging on the swings. So essentially, show me, Abby, a little bit of a swing glide here. So coming forward, yep, no, swinging back, back and forth, yep. Like your little kid, super fun, searing pain down your leg. It's being alleviated right now by doing a swing glide. We've actually saved the best for last. This is usually the most intense tensure. So we're gonna go into a slump position and we're just going to stretch the nerve. So we go into thoracic and lumbar flexion, chin goes down to the chest, and let's go ahead and extend at both knees and then dorsiflex both at the same time. Now relax the legs and go ahead and kick out again. So all we're doing is stretching the nerve over and over and over again. In that study I mentioned previously, they use either a slump tensioner like this or a slump slider like the swing glide we just talked about before. And again, same outcome. So how often should you do these exercises with your patients? So in the study by Al Shami, I mentioned previously, they were having their patients do two sets of 10, right? Of either the tensioner or the slider. So only one exercise, three times per week, two sets of 10, two minutes rest in between, right? Personally, if a patient is getting benefit from the slider or the tensioner, I actually like to do it a little bit more frequently. So if it's helping patients feel better throughout the course of the day, I'll tell them, hey, you can do this every single day, a couple sets of 10 to 15, if you're feeling great and every time you do it, you feel phenomenal, then do it more often. So you can do it in the morning, in the afternoon, the evening, as much as it feels good. But do keep in mind that two sets of 10, three times a week seems to be getting the job done. So these neurodynamics are definitely a piece of the puzzle in order to help your patients. However, we still need some higher level exercises to get them back to more challenging activities as well as the weight room, excuse me, the weight room. I have a video right here in the corner, I want you to click on. I'm gonna go over my favorite exercise I like to use. My patients have low back pain. We're trying to get them to the next level. I'll see you on that video.